today on Real Life. Former Steeler punter Craig Colquitt shares life lessons for kids with a comedic twist in JoJo, What Happened to Your Hair? Also, Katie Farrell brings us a tasty five-ingredient dashing dish recipe. And on Real Life Coaching, are you still tired when you wake up in the morning? Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith explains how rest is so much more than just sleep. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he encourages and empowers you. And the Bible is our guide to abundant life. That's life that is full and complete, Pastor Jay. That's not some settled for life. That's right. Living in, the, in a whole life. That's rising up life. And all the way to the full and then overflow. Overflow. is the abundant life that God has for us. We're here. I'm Don Black. I'm your host. I'm here with my beautiful co-host and bride, Terry, and Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert. Yay. Push that out applause button. <laughs> All right. I'll applaud for you both. There we go. All right, we, hope, we, we pray that your uh, Memorial Day weekend was, was good, that you had a long weekend, and you were able to relax and enjoy your time. Pastor, what, did, what, what was on your schedule? Oh, man, we had a big friends and family week or something. We had something Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and then I had a big cookout at my house on Monday. But the thing I'm most excited about is my team, the Golden State Warriors, won last night. Oh, yeah? And they're playing against LeBron James for the fourth straight finals. Ooh, the oh. first time ever happened are in history. Pick, are you going to pick one Golden today? State. Golden, Golden State. Golden State. Oh, Come on, y'all. I think over here is Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh, so Cleveland I'm fan? neutral in here. No, you know, yes, you are. I'm, I, well, in this yeah. case, I am because oh. there's the only two left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there are some that I would choose before that. But, go, you know, we, we, can, we, can, we can get together on that because I, I think uh, – the, did you watch the game? I don't. Don't those who don't care about basketball, we'll yeah, just right. take a second. Did you watch the the uh, Cleveland game? I did. What I did. a game! It was phenomenal. What phenomenal. a game! LeBron did his thing. What a game! What a game! No, Terry, what a game! Watch a minute of it. I did not watch no, a minute you know of it. Here, let me tell you what Terry did. Her and our son and our daughter. We watched. Paddington 2. It is a really <laughs> cute movie. I highly recommend that movie. And I just wanted to take some time. Friends and family, I didn't know what that was until Jay shared. You might, there's some of us out there that don't know what Friends and Family Weekend is. Well, what is you it? know, I'll be honest with you, I'm from New York. We didn't do it a lot in New York, but it's really, I heard it's a big thing in Pittsburgh where churches really promote big events and it's a time to invite your friends and family to church. And so we just had a big old event the whole weekend. Oh, so it was a lot cool. of fun. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's what friends and family is. That's that is, and, and it's fun well, to Well, you're our together. friend. Yes. And some of you are our family. You know, we, we welcome our family, Cornerstone family. Those are the people who stand with us, pray for us, make a financial contribution to the ministry. And then our friends are people who watch. We're so glad you're watching, so glad you're in our family. You know, speaking of family, it's a great privilege every now and then I go out and see people, and people come up to me and say, hey, I was... This weekend, I'm going to tell you more about this as we go through the week, but this weekend was a construction weekend in the Black family. We that's right. were redoing some hardwood floors, so <laughs> I had I had to go. Now, that's not a job for the weak of heart. I'm <laughs> it is not. Crazy business. But So we went to Home Depot to rent the drum sander, and wow. in, that, in that process, this wonderful lady came up to me. Let me show her a picture. There she is. There Hi. I am in my get... What's Notice the orange on championship from uh, there. We go, SEC champs. Yeah. Uh, Alethea, Alethea came up and said, "Don, I want to say hi to you." And we'd met before, but it was good to meet her at Home Depot. So it's it's funny where you meet. Hello, Alethea. You watched the program. We we it was good to meet you and talk to you and and, and fellowship a little bit together. There's so many people that are part of the families. So when we meet people, Terry, you do. You do it all the time. People come up to you all the time. It just warms my heart. Oh, yes. It just makes, uh, it just is so nice to know that you're out there because sometimes we, you know, obviously we don't get to see our faces of people who um, get to watch real life. And so when you come over and say, hey, and just an, uh, let us know that you're with us and that you are a loyal watcher, or is that a right word, watcher, viewer, well, no, you family? Know, Thank the you. Family That's is, right. Is the thing. And I, I've got to go for you. 
as as your coach. And you know, I'm a real life coach. Pastor Jay's a real life coach, and so is Terry. I'm the cheerleader. She's yeah. cheerleader. Woo! We've okay. got to go for you. We want you to become the very mm -hmm. best you. Amen. The That's person right. God has designed you to be. And he has a specific design for you. And I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many mistakes you've made in the past. All of that gets zeroed out. You start fresh with Jesus every day. And every day we make a decision how we're going to go. You're filled with the Spirit of God, moving according to his word, or kind of staying in the same rut that we've been in all, of, all the rest of our, our lives sometimes, I'm sorry to say. So our goal is that you take that step up forward and become that, that person step by step. You won't get there in a, in a flash, Pastor Jay. That's right. It takes work, it takes discipline, but coming to the place of, of destiny is very, very important. That's right, and it's taken one step at a time, line upon line, precept upon precept. I like what he, you know, we shared a little bit about at Pentecost. He said, I'm not going to give it to you all at once. I'm going to give it to you little by little. God is like that. He meets us as we go down his path. He's got provisions and favor on the path Amen. as we follow down that path. That's right. You're not going to get to the provision. You're not going to get to the favor. You're not going to get to the blessing unless you're moving down the path. That's so important for us. We, 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 I've got to go, I know. We, we're waiting for God to catch up to us when actually he's waiting for us to move his, in his direction. We're excited that we have uh, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith as our coach this week. She's talking about sacred rest and how it's more than a sleep, more than going to bed and sleeping, sacred rest. Jay, what's next? On today's Dashing Dish, Katie Farrell shows us how to make tasty and healthy meal options. Let's head on over to the Real Life Kitchen. I am Katie Farrell with Dashing Dish, and at Dashing Dish, I'm all about teaching you how to create healthy alternatives to the food you crave. Now, I'm a busy mom. I have a five-month-old daughter, and so a lot of times when it comes to lunch or dinner, I'm just scrambling to get something on a plate and serve to my family. Of course, my five-month-old can't exactly enjoy it with us yet, but she sure does take up quite a bit of time. So oftentimes, I'm looking for a quick and easy recipe. This is something that if you like garlic and Parmesan, then you will love this recipe. And really, I hesitate to even call it a recipe because it's something that is such a go-to for me that honestly, you can't go wrong. You just throw a few things in a pan and you have dinner ready. So I have some chicken cooking here in a skillet. This is about one pound of chicken breast. And it's starting to cook over medium high heat. I just sprayed the pan with cooking spray. And you can see it's turning white, it's kind of um, getting a little golden brown on one side. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure it kind of doesn't overcook on one side. And while this is cooking, all you're gonna do is you're gonna add some fresh garlic or you could do some garlic powder. Again, I, I really don't even measure uh, personally at home because you, to me, you can't go wrong. I mean, I love garlic, so I could add as much as two tablespoons and that would be delicious to me. So kind of to your personal taste. But I did about a tablespoon of fresh garlic there. And then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of lemon juice. And this is just to help the chicken um, to cook kind of evenly all the way throughout. And it also keeps that moisture in the chicken so it doesn't get dried out in the pan. Um, and so really it also gives it a little bit of flavor, tenderizes it. It's not adding any calories, it's just adding a little bit of lemon juice. If you don't have lemon juice, you could also do a little bit of chicken stock. So that's kind of my trick to cook chicken through evenly without getting it dried out. So that's all we're gonna do for now. We're gonna make sure it's kind of coated in the lemon juice and garlic. And then I'm gonna move on to the side that we're gonna have with this chicken, which is broccoli. And again, I do this all at once, and that way I have dinner ready in about 15 minutes. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and take my broccoli and I already pre-washed this whole head of broccoli and as a time-saving tip I actually leave the band right on the broccoli and you don't have to do that but I like to do that to kind of hold it all in place and then I just chop the head right off so you have all the florets all in one bunch and that way you're not kind of chasing it all over the cutting board. You can cut off as much of the stems as you'd like but I like a little bit of stem there. And you know, I love broccoli. My mom said when I was little that 
I would call it trees and I would eat it just by the handful. And so I still love broccoli to this day, um, but I do find that not everyone loves broccoli just raw. And so this is a great way to get your family to eat broccoli, maybe your picky eaters in the family without you know, serving them raw broccoli and say, here, you have to eat it. I guarantee they will actually want to eat this broccoli done like this. So I just put it onto a baking pan lined with foil and sprayed with a little cooking spray and that's just for easy cleanup. And then again, I really don't even measure these ingredients. I just kind of sprinkle it over and that's really a time saving tip as well. So I just take the Parmesan cheese and I just sprinkle it right on top of the broccoli. Now you don't wanna go too heavy handed because it's still cheese, but I like to do maybe about a fourth cup on top of the broccoli. And then I'll do some garlic powder. Again, I don't measure it, so I'll just kind of sprinkle it over, but you could do about a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then just a good generous pinch of salt and pepper. And then this broccoli is ready to go in the oven. I'll usually give it a quick spray with some cooking spray and that just helps it kind of crisp up with the Parmesan cheese. And I'll put it into the oven 425 for about 15 minutes, just until the Parmesan gets golden brown. And it's funny because I've actually um, gotten my husband to eat broccoli when I do it like this. And he's like, you know, I'm not a fan of broccoli, but I'll eat the Parmesan broccoli that you make. So that's a good way to get your picky eaters to eat broccoli. And then we have the chicken almost cooked through over here. You can tell it's fully cooked through when the pink is no longer visible. So if you're really concerned, you know, am I overcooking the chicken? A lot of times people get nervous with chicken. You can take the thickest piece of chicken, so like maybe a piece like this, and cut it, you know, just on a little plate with a knife. And if it's no longer pink in the center, then you know it's fully cooked through. And that's important with chicken. Um, but I also like to cut it up, pre-dice it, um, and put it in the pan. That way you're, you know, cooking it very quickly, evenly throughout. Sometimes when you have those big, thick chicken breasts, that's a little bit harder to know is it cooked all the way through. So once we see that it's almost cooked all the way through, that's where we're gonna add our um, dressing. And so for this, I like Tessa May's brand because it's a good organic, clean eating dressing, but you could do any of your favorite clean eating dressing. What I mean by clean eating is it doesn't have a whole lot of processed ingredients, um, just very few ingredients. So this has um, red wine vinegar, olive oil, lemon juice, and a few seasonings, and that's it. So that's what you want to look for when you're picking a good clean eating dressing. And we're only going to do about one tablespoon, one to two tablespoons, just at the end, just before it's finished cooking. And that gives it that flavor. It adds a little bit of uh, the moisture in with that olive oil in the dressing. And it gives it a nice finish. And we're gonna just kind of give it a nice stir and let it brown the rest of the way through. And this is one of my favorite ways to make chicken. Oftentimes I'll make it like this in a pan and I will put it on salads throughout the week just for my lunch. So I'll make this on a Sunday night with a big pan. I'll do maybe two pounds of chicken breast cut up and then I'll add it to salads throughout the week or um, you know, serve it with a side like Parmesan broccoli. So you can make it ahead of time or you can see this is only gonna take maybe about 10 minutes total for the chicken to be totally cooked. So if you don't like leftovers, you can always do it like this and it'll be ready in about 10 minutes. So this is just gonna, the dressing is gonna kind of cook off a little bit. And you don't wanna stir it too much at this point. You wanna let it cook off and brown evenly um, because that's when you get that nice brown on the chicken. If you're stirring, 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 then you're never gonna get that nice golden brown on the chicken that you're looking for. So we're gonna let that cook off just a little bit. We'll see, is it ready to give a little bit more of a stir? Yep, you can see it's kind of, turning a little more gold in there. And you wanna let it cook just until all of that dressing is kind of cooked off and you get that nice golden, see we have a few golden brown pieces there. And whenever I um, serve chicken this way, people always ask me for the recipe and I'm like, you know what, there's really not even a recipe. I did about a tablespoon of garlic, a tablespoon of lemon juice, and then finish it off with a little bit of dressing and it is absolutely delicious and a crowd pleaser every time. And then as far as the broccoli goes, this is the finished product. We have it completely roasted and you can see how the Parmesan 
turn golden brown. And um, I actually like to take the broccoli, I know this sounds funny, and dip it in ketchup. Because to me, it tastes just like a French fry. I mean, you have the salt, the pepper, the garlic, the Parmesan cheese. It's better than a French fry, right? Um, and then the chicken, you serve it with the broccoli and it makes an excellent, well-rounded meal. And really, like I said, you can pretty much get anyone, even picky eaters, to enjoy this. And you can see how good that chicken is when it's finished off there. So I hope that this was helpful for you today and that it's a crowd pleaser with your family, especially on a busy weeknight. For this recipe and more just like it, head over to ctvn.org. Cornerstone family, Terry and I want to personally invite you to join us this October in Israel. This is going to be a trip unlike any tour to Israel. We're keeping it small so that we have personal time together as we worship, fellowship, and explore. Our focus is going to be on the prophetic, past, present, and what is yet to be fulfilled. Israel is where God's Word comes alive. Space is limited, so call today or go online to get all the details. Going to Israel is a life-changing experience. To make it as affordable as possible, we've kept the price under $4,000. We would be honored for you to join us as we visit Israel, the land of prophetic promise. I just watched that about Israel. How are we doing? Have we got any spots left? We do. We have just a few spots left and time to register is fast approaching. So we would love for you to not to sit down and think I'm going to, but go ahead and do it for sure. Sign up to go to Israel. We're going to take a special trip. We're going to take what I call the prophetic tour of Israel, where we're going to go see where prophecies were made, where prophecies were fulfilled, and then the exciting part of it is where yet to, prophecies were, that are yet to be fulfilled. We're going to go to those locations. And I'm going, to, I'm going to guarantee you this. Maybe you can't go on this trip, but one day you will go to Israel. I guarantee you. So Don, how can you guarantee me that? Because Jesus is coming back and he's going to set up his kingdom in Jerusalem. And all of us are going to go to report into the kingdom. And that will be in Israel. So I'm excited about it. So come with us. Come with us if you can. The information is on the screen on how you can get information. And that's not to buy a ticket. That's to get information from our tour partner. So you get a brochure and an itinerary and all that kind of stuff and, uh, and see what the costs are. And just if you're interested in ever going, this is a good time for you to, to check it out. Now, Terry, we're going we're gonna to shift gears here. That's now, right. I know one of your favorite things to do is watch uh, professional sports. Sure, I do. The last two quarters, they were always the best part. <laughs> She'll so. watch the Super Bowl in the last quarter. Okay. NFL is your favorite, right? Uh, oh, I like college football better. Yeah, you well, know, our too. next guest is going right. to be fun to be with because Craig Colquitt is a former Steeler. You guys mm -hmm. remember him? He played with us here in Pittsburgh and he's got a ring to prove it. Not Actually, just got one, two rings two. to prove That's it. Right. His grandson, one time his grandson asked him this funny question. He says, uh, it, and it inspired him. The question was, Jojo, what happened to your hair? Craig, welcome to, to Real Thank Life. You. We're so glad that you're here. <laughs> now, where's Jojo? Is that what, is that what your grandson is called? I am Jojo. Okay. I, I wanted to be called JC, but it came out Jojo, and I said, that sounds great. I'll go with Jojo. <laughs> so he asked you, he said, what happened to your hair? And that inspired you to write this book. It did, it did. I was kind of reinventing myself, looking at uh, you know what I want to do post-work time, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to leave a legacy, a little art, a little well, creativity cool. for the grandkids. Did you did you do the artwork in I it? I did the artwork. and uh, wow, that's really, awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Let's, we, we've got to backtrack. We're going to show you about this right. book in just a few minutes. But first, I'm going to talk to you about your career here in Pittsburgh. Right. That's Tell right. us about what it was like to play football in, 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 in Pittsburgh. Well, I got used to winning. <laughs> you know, my first two years were Super Bowls, so wow. I got used to that. And uh, But it, I always tell people it's uh, Pittsburgh people are so uh, energized because of the uh, sports in the town. So for me, coming from Knoxville, Tennessee, we didn't have so much of a winning schedule, but a huge tradition. And when I got here, it was black and gold, and it was I loved it. Just you went from the color orange, which 
We're volunteers fan. Y'all know that we had a son graduate from University of Tennessee. Their color is orange and white, kind of like, right? Kind of like yeah. these cups. Like these cups. They yeah, went from like orange that. to black and gold. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was a good transition. Uh, it was very exciting. And I, and I did get used to winning. You know, we, we played the Dallas Cowboys and won. Dallas was actually going to draft me in the fifth round. The day before the draft, they told me. And Pittsburgh took me in the third, and I was disappointed because everybody wanted to be a Cowboy. You know, that's just the way it was. But then uh, I got a call from the Steelers, and they were telling me, how do you like to play with Terry Bradshaw, Franco Harris, Lynn Swan? Goes through the names, and I go, you know, this sounds really good. Actually, I was emotional about it. I hadn't thought it that way. What was it like when you first reported to camp? You got to meet those guys. What did that feel like? It, that was the... Uh, Elevating, actually, it's the only way to say it, because I was a nervous wreck. I'm coming from East Tennessee, a little country boy, and, and still saying right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, these guys were saying, we need a punter. We, we, we need you here, whatever we can do. So it was very welcoming. Oh, you know, my awesome. hero immediately was Jack Lambert. You know, of mm -hmm. course, Terry Bradshaw, but uh, I played defense and offense, and, and it was just uh, slobber knocker football. It was fun <laughs> to watch. Yeah. And I watched. I was a punter, so... Well, you didn't just watch. I feel sorry for the punters many times because people feel like they're not really part of the action. But tell us the facts. Uh, the actions, I've, I've been hit pretty hard by the small guys. Small guys are very fast. Big guys I can get away from. But, yeah, if you miss a punt and it's glaring, it's hard to go back to the sidelines and look at the coach. So, yeah, you pay a vital part. Sometimes the punter is the one who saves the day. Has yeah. to go get that the last line of defense is that is that punter to go up and make the stop that's true that's true and i had to miss a couple missed three for touchdowns but i got involved a, a few tackles so well, was... i talked to you all day long about about the nfl and about Steeler football because we're big fans yeah. right. but you're not here to talk about that right. we're here to talk about the book you know, a book for kids i think it's really cute thank so, you so when you were when you were thinking about doing this was it with your grandkids in mind that you did it? It was, because it's a grandkid, uh, grandson, Nash. Mm -hmm. He's the son of the punter for the Cleveland Browns. His, uh, my son's are with the Chiefs and the Browns. So, oh, really? So yeah. you have children that play football that play, now as well. Yeah. yeah, and the Steelers play the Browns uh, twice. So yeah, we uh, sure do. <coughs> kind of, we kind of play the Browns. Kind of play. Yeah. But yeah. let's not talk about football. Oh, that, okay. So you, have, uh, so you were talking about how did the book come about? I, I, I was tr I'm transitioning. You know yeah. what I want to do uh, as as work is it going to be creativity? Do I go back into sales? What I want to do? And grandkid asked me this question, and and actually I'm talking to Britton too. And I said, did you hear what he said? And he said, Daddy's just a kid. And I said, No, there's something to this. I got to figure out what to do with this. So what I did, because I'm always telling them stories anyway. You know how it is to be around grandkids, your children anyway. We telling them stories. Clue. We don't have any grandkids. We're not so they're in that you can borrow, yet. I've got nine. You can borrow them. <laughs> so, but spending that time with them and telling them stories and looking at their faces, how and, and they're engrossed in what I'm saying. I said I, I want to leave a legacy. So there's there's the art. There's the, you know, investing in in publishing, meeting a lot of fantastic people through Lifeway. As a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. uh, where they're coming from. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, now, you know, <clears throat> what's, what's important to you is your family, and but you carry around. Now, attention camera guys, he's going to show something tight. He carries around with you this business card because Jesus is really the center of what we're talking about here. And that's, that's, tell us about that. Yeah, it's, it's, I have a lot of fun with this, actually. I, I've, I retired in 87. I still get fan mail in the in the mail. And I imagine like Terry Brash probably gets thousands a week. Who knows? But uh, I have five cards and I know they're running out. They have to by now. So I made these up uh, because I would get something asking for autograph just on a piece of paper. And I said, I need to take this further. So I put Philippians 4, 6 through 8 at the bottom. But mm -hmm. I'll go up to strangers and say, can I give you my business card? Mm -hmm. And they go, oh, God, what are you selling? You know, like that. And I'll just say, this is me and, and, and what I did, Super Bowl rings, and here's my business. So it's, it's an opportunity uh, to share my faith. Have you card. always, like even when you were a Pittsburgh Steeler, were you, did you believe in God and did, was your faith a part of your life at, as, at that time too? Yeah, the beauty of you know, Chuck Noe would have a Lord's Prayer before and after the game, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's a tradition 
but I, I was part of the FCA as a child. I was born again at age five, baptized. So, I'm, but I'm actually the prodigal son, the prodigal old man, <laughs> and and I tell people I'm back. Uh, strong. So uh, my mission now is to care for the family and whatever I can do in my area. And I'm on the board of directors for a fellowship of Christian athletes. And been awesome with that for a long time. So a lot of opportunity, a lot of need. Yes, well, FCA is a very mm -hmm. powerful organization. Well, we heard me talking about finishing life strong and being the best you. Now, see, so when you go and play in the NFL, and I, I, I watch this, watch what we're, we're going to talk about because it's very important because it relates to all of us. Because when you play in the NFL, you rise to this level of, uh, well, only a 3% of college football players make it to play in the NFL. So you rise to this pretty elite level. And then, but the average career there's like four years. And so after that, lives get re-challenged. So the best you isn't found when you're 21, 22 years old the best use found later on in life. So can you just share a word of encouragement about there's something better coming or there's a better version of you coming? Yeah, that's it, really a good point because people ask me, what'd you do coming out? And I wasn't prepared. I didn't finish school, uh, college. I tried to go back after football, but having kids and not in football, not making the money that I was, I needed to go back to school, but I didn't have time. I couldn't, I had to work. So I spent about 10, 12 years struggling there until I found the guys I worked with for 18 years. We built a business to 36,000 employees, wow. but that was a blessing for me. You know, I've, I've, I'm unfortunately divorced, but I was able to take care of my wife and I'm taking care of myself now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I was a walk-on in college, so the attitude I have is can do. And mm -hmm. my faith uh, is the foundation of that. So with that foundation, I've, I've transitioned quite well into real life. And that's the, and that's the basis of any season in life Amen. is having the foundation of Christ. Right. That's right. So. Started out strong, let's mm -hmm. finish strong. Excellent. Encourage you at home, finish strong. Finish the race, Paul said it. He said, let's finish, we run the race to win. So let's run the race to win. Let's go forward in faith and, and say to uh, all the circumstances that knock you down, because we could talk about getting knocked down, mm -hmm. getting knocked out sometimes even, but God will raise you up. He'll give you a new beginning, a new start. All you gotta do is ask. Terry, that's all you gotta do. You just gotta that's ask right. and believe and trust and mm -hmm. go forward in faith. You know, we're gonna come back. We're gonna see what God's found in the headlines. As the Santa Fe community continues to heal from the school shooting, one story of a Christian teen's heroism is coming to light. Riley Garcia was one of the 10 students who lost their lives in the tragedy outside of Houston. The family's pastor says investigators told them Riley died while trying to help others. Riley blocked a door to an art classroom while the shooter opened fire. When a bullet came through the door and hit the 15 year old, his classmates had more time to escape and get away. Riley's pastor baptized him and hopes his brave sacrifice will bring some comfort to his family as they continue to mourn. And as the families of the Santa Fe shooting victims prepare to lay their loved ones to rest, Houston Texan J.J. Watt promised to pay for all the funeral expenses. The Christian Defense event recently brought some joy to the shooting survivors by visiting them at the hospital. The NFL star is known for his humanitarian efforts in Houston, most notably in wake of Hurricane Harvey. And now to some news closer to home. Edinburgh University held its first ever Christian crossover concert. The campus ministry, Chi Alpha, held an event called the Reach Concert. It featured hip hop and spoken word artists propaganda, along with Egypt Speaks and Brandon Fox Worship. More than 100 students came out for the concert, and the event helped raise nearly $300 for local and international mission work for Chi Alpha. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. Here at Cornerstone, we want you to be in the loop. Call now for Real Life Today, the free newsletter that will keep you up to date on all of our programs and specials. It has encouraging articles and behind the scenes stories. Real Life Today, the little newsletter that packs a giant punch. Call now. Interested in a product featured on today's Real Life? Now you can find all of your favorite books, CDs, DVDs, gifts, 
and more. All in one place at ctvn.org slash shop. Real Answers for Real Life, now delivered right to your mailbox. Welcome to Real Life Coaching, where our goal is to help you find out who the best you is, and then, as the best you, win in life God's way. Do you ever wake up and find that yourself that you're more tired now than when you went to bed? Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith continues her coaching session with us on how we can find God's sacred rest. Let's get ready for coaching. Dr. Sandra, I'm so glad that you're a coach. And we're talking about a very important subject. We're talking about rest mm -hmm. and that sacred rest, which you're giving me a whole new revelation on what that means. What that means, and in our last coaching session, this was news to me that sacred rest leads to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been fighting to get to sleep and hopefully that's gonna help me have better rest. But my, my, my equation is backwards. <laughs> Absolutely. Rest and sleep there. The connection really is interesting. And I think that's a big key for a lot of people is knowing how to make that transition. So tell me more about rest. Let's go deeper into the rest equation. Okay. We went through the first three types of rest. That was the physical, emotional, or rather the physical, mental, and spiritual. Those are the three that most of us are familiar with. So now I want to go into four other types of rest that you may never have thought about before. And these are four types of rest that I find that a lot of people are deficient in. And it's that deficiency that leads them to wake up in the morning time, despite having had some sleep, but still wake up in the morning feeling tired. One of the number one questions people come into my medical practice and tell me is that, why am I tired all the time? Why is it despite getting sleep, am I still tired all the time? And this is where that difference comes in, is because if you have a rest deficit in any of these seven areas, then you will feel that fatigue because the fatigue you feel isn't necessarily related to a physical deficit. It can be related to either a physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, social, sensory, or creative deficit. And so once you understand that, then you're able to see that replacing those areas, replenishing them, is how we get back to feeling our best and being able to be effective in doing the things that God would have for us to do. Now let's take a look at emotional rest. Emotional rest is that mentality of thinking that we are always in performance mode. And this goes across the board. I work with people from every form of career and lifestyle you can imagine, from stay-at-home moms to attorneys to other physicians, teachers, you name it. All of us have a level of professionalism that is expected of us and that is required of us in doing our day-to-day -day job. What happens is, in, our, in that professionalism, we start having a bit of performance. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with that, but that is a level of stress. So if you're constantly in performance mode, you're constantly in this keeping up appearances mindset, what happens is that level of stress starts affecting you and it affects your ability to know that you are loved and accepted authentically. And that's where I have people start looking at with emotional rest. Emotional rest is, is getting to that point in your life where you can authentically share who you are. It's why, it's why testimonies are so powerful, because we're able to share our frailties without the fear of, of being judged. We're able to be truthful and authentic about our stories without having to feel like we are constantly in need of performing or, or keeping up appearances. There is an emotional peace that comes when you know that you can just tell it like it is. 
And that's the part that a lot of us don't experience. We live in that mindset that we have to keep up appearances, but there should be people in your life that you have the ability to let your guard down and that you have the ability to speak your truth and to let them know where you're at. If you're, if you're someone who has struggled with, well, I, I never feel like I can tell the people around me that I'm having a difficulty in this area, that's going to cause an emotional deficit because, you're, because that lack of ability to connect with others lends itself to more depression and more anxiety because what ends up happening is you start feeling like you're the only one and you start withdrawing from people because you feel like you can't relate. When the reality is, we are more alike than we are different. Someone is struggling with the exact same thing you are. It's just one of you have to be willing to be authentic, has to be willing to be vulnerable, and willing to allow yourself to share your testimony and share where you're at. Because that's when God can come in. When you two are sitting there, that's when the power of His presence comes in and starts doing a healing work. Because most of the emotional issues that we suffer with require a much deeper healing than medications. Medications are beneficial and needed, but trying to do the medicines alone oftentimes does not solve the issue. There is a deeper healing sometimes that has to happen for wounds. And one thing a lot of people oftentimes will tell me is, well, I don't want to go deep into some of my emotional wounds. They hurt too bad. Why do I want to pull that back up? Why do I want to resurface it? Well, I look at it like this. It's no different than when I'm, when I'm dealing with a physical wound. Sometimes there's scar tissue and debris. In, what, in medical field, we call them S-scars. They're hardened scars that come over the top of the wound, but they're not healthy tissue. It is diseased tissue that is scarred up and that needs to be removed so that healthy tissue can then come in and replace. And the removal of that tissue is painful, but that pain really is just there to testify that there is still life. So sometimes when we're hurting, when we're going deep into our emotional wound healing, and we're going through that need for emotional rest, sometimes tears fall when you're sharing that testimony or you're hearing someone else's testimony. That's all part of that deeper healing that's needed. And that's when we start getting to the point where we see that pain is just testifying that there is still life present. The next type of rest I want us to look at is social rest. Social rest has to do with the power of being in someone's presence. Now when I say social rest, a lot of times people think about um, being away from people. And we're going to discuss that more in sensory rest. But social rest really is about the power of, a, of being in someone's presence. Our generation right now is faced on text messaging and quick telephone calls and things that we can do to quickly connect with other people, quickly communicate. You know, your husband could be in the next room, your wife could be in the next room, and instead of actually walking into the room, we send a text message, right? Well, that's the thing. That creates its own level of stress in our social relationships because we lose the power of being in someone's presence and it becomes less important to us. And so what social rest is, it's that reconnecting with being in the presence of others. And, and from that, we get body language. The body language, the facial expressions, all that is involved with being in someone's presence. That's why if you're gonna call up your mother or you're gonna call up a friend or someone that you want to connect with, I recommend using something like FaceTime where you can actually see each other face to face over a phone call or to do something like visit because that's when we get that type of social rest that we need, those relationships that build us up. Every day, each and every one of us probably work with people or in situations where we're dealing with people who may make us feel drained. It's important to identify those relationships that have a tendency to drain you because those relationships need to be counteracted with relationships that are life-giving and restorative. And the way you do that, the way you revive that drain, that social drain from some, those, those people with negative tendencies is to surround yourself in the presence of those with, that make you feel better that bring the presence of God into your life, just in their words and their actions and how they relate to you, and to make a point of spending more time with them face to face. And that requires us to sometimes put our cell phones down and actually get in front of them. 
Now the next type of rest is sensory rest. Sensory rest, we all have our five senses, and our five senses, senses are constantly under attack. Every day you're, you're hearing noise, your bright lights are on, you're maybe sitting in front of your computer, there's activities, smells, there's all types of things that are going on around you. And regardless of if you're paying attention to how those things are affecting you, they do. So something as simple, if you're someone who's working at a computer throughout the day, something as simple that if you have to be on that computer at nighttime, by turning down the light intensity can have a huge impact on how your body relaxes. The intensity of the light on our cell phones, there are actually even apps now that at a certain time can turn that down. Silence, if you're someone who spends a lot of time around noise and you never have time for silence, sometimes even more beneficial than playing worship music would be having no sound at all. It is very hard to hear God's voice when there's constant noise around you. And so allowing yourself to have those times to break away and to, to allow silence and solitude to be a part of your journey. Peace sometimes is only gonna be present when you are able to clear the slate. And that includes the sensory slate as well, allowing there to be some white noise in your life where there is nothing going on, some free space for God to speak and to create in. And then the final type of rest is creative rest. And I find this to be very interesting because it's a type of rest that's very, very rarely discussed um, when we just uh, talk about rest in general. But there's lots of studies that have been out that talk about the effect of how nature and water affect our brain. There are studies that showed that when we get around natural scenes and water, that people have actually improved stress levels. Cortisol levels go down. They are more efficient in being able to think creative ideas. There is a relaxation that happens with just being around nature. And not just natural beauty, but also creative rest has to do with how, our, how we interpret art and beauty in general. If you've ever been someone who loves the, um, classical music and you kind of have that great feeling of being revived when you're around beautiful sounds or beautiful art or theater even, those are all signs of creative rest. And what happens is when we get busy, when we get overwhelmed in our lives, those are some of the first things to go. We decide we don't have time for those things that revive us. We decide that it's not beneficial. And the reality with rest is that rest is about restoring. It restores us back to a better place so that we're then able to do more and do it more effectively. It puts back in the energy and the enjoyment in the work that we do. Because work is, work is needed, but when we do work without rest, we no longer can get the enjoyment and we no longer feel the satisfaction that is available from the work that we're doing. Work and rest can be, uh, don't, they don't have to be enemies. Absolutely not, they work together. Work and rest, there should be really a work-rest ratio in effect in each one of our lives. A ratio where you are working at your optimal capacity, but you are resting at a level that keeps you restored and revived so that every time you go into the work, you go into it energized, impassioned, empowered, mm -hmm. and ready to do the work before you. Because work is really from God. Mm -hmm. From my perspective, what we do is God given. I mean, you're a doctor because you were called by God to be a doctor and you paid the price to take to do the training to follow that calling. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're a doctor. And so when you serve as, as a doctor, you're being obedient to God. So your work is part of your call, which is part of your passion, which is part of your reason for being. That's true for all of us. We all walk in that same uh, rhythm of how we, what we do with our gifts and our talents and how those gifts and talents apply into how we earn a living and then how we earn a living with what we do with, with what we earn, mm -hmm. how we manage that and how we're good stewards of that. I, I, I really appreciate your work because I know this was not an easy process because you're already full-time physician, mm -hmm. a full-time mom, full-time wife to your husband and all the other things that you do, I'm sure, in the community. So thank you for the work. It w wouldn't it be great if you had, or you could take doc Dr. Um, um, Sandra back home with you and have her as your personal private physician and you can talk with her at, at will and 
just talk about rest and talk about sleep and talk about how to find these seven different kinds of rest? Well, that's not possible because she has to be where she is, but this is like a step in that direction. Your own session with her in depth about this teaching about rest. It's a God-given privilege to be at rest. I want to give you the book. I want to give you the DVD. I want to give you both of these as our planning of our seed into your life because so many that are watching right now are all up in a knot, all stressed out and all weary and can't sleep and just have to be driven. Always go, 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 go because you're trying to live your life the best you can. Well, the secret is enter into God's rest. It's a rest that only he can provide. And this is a pathway for you to learn how to enter into his rest. And by understanding them, you'll be able to get to that place of peace. Your best gift into the ministry, we'll send you the hardback book and the DVD, an hour or more of, of this teaching on DVD so you can watch it. Get it into your head. Start reprogramming your mind so that you will now know how to stand. Paul said, and having none all sand, because you're more than a conqueror in Christ. He's given you everything you need. Every piece of this puzzle is inside of you already because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. So call us at the number on the screen, 888-665-4483. Make a contribution into the ministry. We'll make a contribution into your life. And then we'll celebrate and go forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we'll hear a testimony. Maybe you'll call us with a testimony like this one. Where there is hope, there is faith. Where there is faith, miracles happen. And miracles happen when you pray. My most recent experience is proof of that. I had been suffering very badly with hip pain for quite some time. Because the pain has been so excruciating, I've been walking with a limp. I needed a miracle in my life, more so than ever. When turning on Cornerstone Network, Joel Grantham was on there praying. He put his hands on the screen and told anyone who is watching to do the same, if they are in need of a miracle. So. I placed my hands on the TV and began to pray with him. As I prayed, I began to feel a burning, tingling sensation in my legs. The pain was going away. I began to walk and move around so much better than before. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of faith and for providing me with one of your all-powerful miracles. Well, I'm always so excited to see the testimonies of what God does and the power of prayer. You know, that our prayer line is always open at any time for you to call in, that you can find prayer partners that will touch and agree. It's a place of agreement where God can bring a breakthrough into your life. And, you know, as we're thinking about rest, you know, you think about rest and sleep and how the two go together. And I love the fact that she breaks down all seven of those uh, from physical, mental, and spiritual, which we talked about yesterday. But today she goes into emotional, social, sensory, and creative and how whenever you don't have the rest in those areas, there's gonna be stress. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that stress is what breaks us down. And so what she's really doing is giving us an opportunity to be able to have a rest in our lives from the stress that's going on in our world. You know, I, n I never thought about rest this way at all. I mean, honestly, I, when I was like, when thinking about rest, I only thought about it from a physical right. point of view. But for her to not just bring it into three different categories, yeah. but to have seven different categories of rest, and they all make sense. You know, it makes sense to have creative rest. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I just I appreciated she said that about what she said that there are studies that they say that you have less stress when you're involved in nature. You know, when you're around nature and water, there's just something about that that de-stresses you and it makes you appreciate art. And, and I'm like, that makes sense. I mean, doesn't that make sense to you? All the ways that she brought down, they broke down these different categories? Well, think about God. 
-hmm. And think about creation. God created everything in six days. Yeah. Well, now God doesn't get tired. Right. So it's not like he had to, he didn't sleep, he had to go take a nap. Yeah. You know, on the seventh day, he said in the seventh day, God rested. So that gives us a clue that there's more to rest than going to take a nap or right. sleeping at night. Because right. God, the Bible says that God never sleeps nor slumbers. Yeah. So that's not part of his DNA. He's not created for that he has to have that kind of sleep. Right. But he had to have rest. Mm -hmm. You, you, yeah, you track with me? Yeah. So he had to have rest. Now, why did he have rest? Because he needed, he needed for us to understand. Right that the Sabbath, the, the day of rest, is so critically important for us on, on all levels. Because if we don't enter into rest, and I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm speaking to myself because I'm the worst at this. I need to learn, you all pray for me, because I need to learn how to enter into rest. Maybe you do too. That's right. Maybe you do too, because we're so wired up, you know, we just go, go, go. And in type A personalities, and perhaps you're one of those type A personalities where you go, go, firstborn. Terry, you know any firstborn people? And maybe, There's two, maybe three. Maybe, we're maybe all, all three of us are firstborn. Yes. You know, we're just kind of charge mode, charge. Right. I don't mean credit card, I'm talking about moving <laughs> forward, charge. And I think, Pastor, that's part of the deal with us is to find peace and rest. Mm -hmm. There's a parallel world between the peace, the peace of God and the rest, that sacred rest of God. And that's what, that's what Dr. S uh, Dalton Smith focus on and is really very, very mm -hmm. important work. There's nothing like it. I've never, as Terry mm -hmm. said, I've never heard the teaching like this that breaks it down and makes it simple from a medical perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, don't forget, she's a doctor who's taken time and prayerfully considered the spiritual nature of rest, the physical nature of rest, and the emotional nature of rest. I want you to have this book. And I want, I, I, we also want you to have this DVD, which we created with Dr. Uh, Dalton when she was here. It's a book, DVD together. This is over an hour's worth of her telling us more and more about the book. And then you can start to learn about rest how to enter into that rest. And if you'll plant a seed into this ministry, your best gift into this ministry, then I, 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 I'll send you, Terry will send you, Jay will send you this book and this DVD mm -hmm. with our prayerful blessing that it will become a place that you can learn how. Because when we enter into God's rest, that's a place of great, that's where we receive. It's in his rest. Exactly. Hebrew tells us all about rest. That's right. You know, I love the subtitle of her book. It says, Recover Your Life and Renew Your Energy. You know, when we don't take rest emotionally, socially, sensory, creative, and all the other ones that she mentioned, we can't recover. And when you don't recover, you can't renew. So we're always working on empty. And That's as a result, right. we suffer spiritually. And I think one of the things she mentions, even though I, I like the emotional part of it, because that's the place she said you find out that you're unconditionally loved, mm -hmm. you're accepted, you're not driven all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, my pastor said to me one time, he said, there's a difference between being driven and being called. Mm -hmm. Driven is where we're working out of ourselves, trying to get to a certain place. But called is when you've been recovered, you've mm -hmm. been renewed, and then you're working out of His strength, that's, that's which you said in Hebrews 4, that's we're laboring in His energy. That's good. Well, and I appreciate it with, when it comes about emotional rest, how sometimes we don't surround ourselves with people who encourage us in That's our right. walk with God, that provide positive input into you. And I'm speaking to some of you out there that you have some friends that are sort of down on you, that are just pulling you down. And it says here to have rest and to have emotional healing, that you need to have rest. You need to have people that are positive influences in your life. You know, have people in your life, have friends that are pouring into you positive, that are pouring life into you, mm -hmm. that encourage you, that accept you as you are. That's what you need to do, guys. Mm -hmm. Finding those folks is hard, but it's critical, important to cir circle yourselves with people of like mind. That's true. Have a vision, purpose. They don't pull you down, they lift you up. Mm -hmm. That's the team, that's the family. That's what we are in, at Cornerstone. That's what we are at uh, our real life program. Well, that's our goal is to lift you up. I know if you've been watching us very long, then you see our goal is to provide real answers, Pastor Jay, mm -hmm. for real life. Amen. And that's, that's, that's tangible stuff. 
and rest and sleep is tangible yeah. stuff. Yeah. This is this is where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And that's what my my heart is that you'll be able to take that step and rise up, mm -hmm. and another rise and keep rising. The Bible says from glory to glory. Amen. That's right, you know, and I love this about rest too. Isaiah 40, 31, it talks, I call it the four stages of life. So they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like an eagle. They'll run and not be weary, walk and not faint. There's four different seasons right there. There's the waiting, which is where we get our resting. That's right. Then he said, you'll soar, That's good, brother. then you'll run, That's but then good. you'll walk. And sometimes we're trying to walk and run and soar when we need to be waiting. Absolutely. And that's where this gives you practical that's principles good. how to wait that's upon good, the Lord, brother. find rest, so you can renew yourself mm -hmm. and begin to soar once again mm -hmm. in the vision that God's given your life. Well, mm -hmm. I want you all to speak Amen about the fact that that when you say wait, a lot of times people think that's just very passive. So, but it doesn't. What do you think that means to wait on the Lord? Do we just sit around and not do anything? Or is there something no, that wait, we need to do? You wait actively. Okay. You wait actively. You don't, you don't, you're not waiting like sitting in the, in the, in the Barker lounger. You know, you're, you're waiting on the Lord actively. But mm -hmm. what the Spirit of God just revealed to me in, that many have, many have soared. Once you soared, I'm, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm speaking to somebody specifically. Listen to me closely. You once soared, but then you crashed because you did not have the rest. You didn't have the rest. You burn out. You just burn out because, but you were at a, you were at a place that God was using you mightily. You were soaring as Pastor Jay was just talking about, but you crashed because you didn't have the rest. You didn't have the renewing. That's right. You didn't ran down gas. <laughs> you know, your, your plane crashed because you didn't fill the tank with, with the Lord. This is this this this, this teaching, brother, is yeah. for you. Amen. Call the number. We're gonna give it to you. Plant a seed in the ministry. Because just because you're down doesn't mean you have to be out. There's there's a time when you're down, and sometimes we all get there, don't feel condemned. But when we're down, it's time to get up. But you got to start in the rest, because mm -hmm. Pastor Jay, it's it's where that in that peace, because the, the 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 perfect love cast out all fear. Where do you find perfect love in intimacy Amen. with Amen. God? Where do you find intimacy with God in rest in Amen. in His presence? Yes. God teach us to learn how to rest. We've got some prayer requests that have been coming. In. We encourage you to pray. One eight to call in for we, us to pray together. 888-665-4483. Let's, let's join our hearts together. Father God, yes. we thank you for your divine rest. God, we claim it in Jesus' yes, Lord. name. Lord, I send it out right now. Let the rest of God move in, in our hearts, Father God. Let us move into your place of peace, yes, that place that passes all under understanding. Father, let us move into that relationship, Lord, where we can be calm. Lord, where we can be joyful, where we can be filled with your spirit, fresh and new. Lord, rise up those people that have crashed, Lord, and bring them into a place of rest for renewing. And we ask this, and every one of these prayer requests, God, yes, every God, one, everyone. meet their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God, let, let your healing go out right now in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 So glad that you're part of our family. Thank you for tuning in to Real Life every day. We invite you to come back where we're going to find real answers for real life. We'll see you on tomorrow's program. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.